Hi everybody! So today I want to go through all of the recent makeup releases over the last like month or so and just give my thoughts. I do this type of video about once a month because I like to talk shit and I like to lust over things that I'm not gonna buy. I'll be honest, usually this type of video is an anti-haul. I don't really buy a lot of new makeup. So even when I want to, even when I really like something, I find myself kind of talking myself out of it. So that's just kind of what this video is. There's a lot of shit talking for sure, but also just kind of anti-hauling in general. So I'm gonna look through Trend Mood and probably some indie pages too. Let's just get started. I'm gonna scooch over. Oh, also I'm only gonna talk about what I kind of feel like talking about. Like for example, the first thing popping up is Valentino Beauty. I didn't even know Valentino Beauty existed. I have absolutely no thoughts about Valentino Beauty at all, other than it's probably a huge waste of money because luxury designer brands creating makeup is almost never going to be actually good so i'm just that like i'm just going to skip things i don't feel like talking about so there's a sneak peek of some new ColourPop palettes you know i'm a ColourPop stan i don't buy a lot of it because there's just so much of it um and I, i'm definitely critical sometimes but for the most part like ColourPop is one of my favorite brands i like the price point i think that the quality that you get for the price you pay for ColourPop is exceptional. I think that it's very rare to find something that you're actually gonna be disappointed in quality-wise, and you're not really paying that much money for it. That being said, ColourPop is really bad about releasing like very toned down, dusty palettes, and it looks like this sneak peek is not that case. I appreciate that these appear to be like a brighter, like more impactful color story, um, rather than like a desaturated version, but at the same time, these are just more monochromatic palettes and I'm kind of tired of it. I don't know, it's pretty been there, done that. Like, all they seem to release is like dusty palettes that are kind of desaturated or bright monochromatic palettes. I just really wish they would do something else. This is kind of cute. Natasha Denona Puff Paint. It's just like another cream blush. They call it a liquid blush serum. They look really pretty and they look like a really interesting kind of like new consistency but at the same time they're $22 each and they look really little. I'm getting into cream blushes. I really like the idea of a cream blush. I think that they are really pretty. These are really interesting shades. They only have three shades and one is like very tan neutral and a really hot pink and a really deep berry so I don't know. The tan one looks more like a bronzer than a blush. The more I look at them, the more they look like they could be like really patchy. I don't know, for $22, they should be bigger. There should be more shades to choose from and there should be better photos of how the product actually looks on the skin. This palette from ColourPop, this mega, um, your golden palette it's been getting like pretty decent feedback that i've seen so far like people seem to be into it and i don't understand because why is it so big i can point out like one two three four five six seven eight about 10 shades that are just dupes of like other shades that like it does this palette does not need to be so big number one Number two, they're doing like the Morphe thing where they it seems like they took all the shades that they wanted and threw them at a wall and just wherever they stuck is where they went in the palette. I hate that. I hate when palettes are disorganized like that because when they do this with palettes, when they have a jumbled mess and they have many shades that look almost identical to other shades, it's hard to see at first glance that you're paying for like five of the same shade. If they organized it in a way that made sense, it'd be a lot easier to see that it doesn't need to be this fucking big, first of all, and most of these shades look the same. So they're doing that thing, and I thought, I thought like people were catching on to this, but I guess not. This is just a neutral palette with like two pops of color, and I don't know, like, it's pretty. Don't get me wrong, like, it's a pretty palette. It looks really pretty for summer, but like, if you have bare necessities, you do not need this palette. Just buy a blue single and then you have this palette. So I don't know, I was like disappointed in this one. I was really hoping that they would do something like really bright, really summery, really colorful because the shade names implied that and then they, 
this is one that I'm not here for, sorry. <laughs> I think it's really pretty, and if you really need like a neutral, summery palette, go for it, but you probably don't need this. <laughs> Morphe is ripping off Kaja now, are we surprised? Like, Morphe just... We need to just stop with Morphe. We need to stop giving Morphe our money so they can go away. And that's all I'm gonna say about Morphe. They're annoying, they have shit, absolutely shit quality. Every single time it's bad, bad quality. And they're just awful. This looks good. Oh, I like this. Too Faced has a lip treatment. Uh, hangover pillow balm. I'm not like a Too Faced person. I've tried a couple of their products and they're fine. But I, you know I love a good lip balm. I love a good lip treatment. I'll give anything a try if it's a lip treatment. And these look really pretty. They have watermelon, banana, cocoa, and mango. So they got fun flavors. I like lip treatments that are slightly tinted with a color because then you can kind of, it kind of works like a, like a lip color, like a lip gloss, but it's treating your lips. I like this, I'm here for this. They're $23, so I'm not gonna get one, but um, I think they look really nice. If I, like, I don't really shop at Sephora very often, but if I ever do, and I see that they're on sale, I would probably pick one up, I'm not gonna lie, these look kinda good. Oh my god, I feel like I'm just scrolling and scrolling, like nothing is catching my eye, I'm just not interested in like most of the stuff at all. Okay, so Revolution Pro, they are a cruelty-free brand, and I like their powder. They have a Pro Cream Skin Perfector CC Tint. So I've been talking a lot about how I wanna try to use like, you know, maybe a tinted moisturizer, or I wanna try to transition out of using like powder foundations. Um, and I want something really lightweight, kind of more of like a sheer, maybe build up to medium coverage, but something just really lightweight. And I think a CC cream like might do it for me. And I know that the Revolution Pro line has a pretty good shade range. I'm just really having a hard time finding something that matches my skin. I can find a lot of good like tinted moisturizers that look really good, uh, but they won't match me. And so let's see like this shade range. So there's only five shades. So it doesn't look promising that they would have a shade for like most people. They're saying that it has shade adapting technology. It, that just means it's sheer, right? Like the pigment that exists in the product is unable to recognize like what your skin shade is. Like there's not a single product out there that is gonna be like a chameleon product that like recognizes what shade you are and turns into that shade. That's not how this works. So what this means is that it's just a very sheer coverage product, which is fine. But if it's, it, even if it's sheer, if it's not the right shade, if it's too dark or too light, you're gonna look orange or you're gonna look ashy, at least a little bit. So, I don't know, like, I guess the hunt is still on. The deep shade actually looks like really deep for this though, which is good. The light shade looks good, but I've been burned before when it looks light enough, it ends up not actually being light enough. So I guess this ColourPop release just completely passed me by. I probably got an email about it and I looked at it, deleted it, and it just left my brain. Like this is such a boring, it's not even that it's like boring necessarily because like, you know, really pretty berry lip shades. The palette itself has like, you know, some pops of color, but just overall, this is not memorable. I know that I've seen this before and it just isn't sticking. Like, I don't know, there's something about this that I just don't like. It looks pretty, but very boring. What is this, Lawless? I don't think I've heard of Lawless. They're a Sephora brand, so this is pretty expensive, but this looks interesting. A lip plumping line smoothing gloss. I don't know how that would work. Maybe just the fact that it plumps like would inherently smooth out lines. Yeah, the photo, it, I don't think they mean like lines around like age lines. I think they just mean the lines in the lips based on these photos. So yeah, that's a strange name because both gloss and plumping gloss kind of smooths your lip lines out. So I take that back. This is just like weird marketing meant to like trick you. Like I don't think there's anything special about this now that I'm thinking about it harder, but it looks pretty. 
Elf has some stuff. Elf has really cute packaging. I like their Jelly Pop stuff. I've never actually tried it, but I like the packaging and I like the vibes of it, but I don't know. I get in like moods where I like Elf and then moods where I'm just kind of over it and I want to try something else. I like the Elf price point, so that's kind of what gets me every time, but... I don't know, I got like burned by their ride or die balm. I noticed that when I wear it in my videos, it like sticks in the corners and it looks disgusting. So I don't know, I, I gotta take a step back from e.l.f. because I feel like, I feel betrayed, so. Oh, they have a lip mask though. I have so many lip masks, I've been stocking up on them. I don't really need anything else right now, but yeah, their packaging is really cute for their jelly stuff. Oh yeah, the Soul Body uh, Body Foundation. That looks really cool. Um, it's not a product I would really use, like, this is definitely for someone, maybe like stage models or something, like, I guess that makes sense, but, uh, or like, you know, if you have to cover a tattoo for whatever reason, like, that definitely makes sense. We already have Derma Blend for that, but if this works in a similar way and works just as effectively at a lower price point, I think that's great. I haven't heard any reviews about it, though, so it must not be that good. I don't know, like... Maybe it's just not a product most people want. Let's see the comments, actually. Okay, so someone is saying that face and body foundations are comfortable to wear on the face. And people are saying the shade range sucks. I agree. I kind of agree, yeah. It doesn't go light enough, and there isn't enough, like, variety. The darkest shade looks really good, but then the shade right above that is... I feel like just too light, like there should have been one in between them. The two medium shades look very similar, like there could have been one that was like just a little darker. You know, some of the fair shades look really similar too. It is a kind of a bad shade range, but also I feel like this is not a product that most people are really asking for or looking for, so I don't know, this might have just been a waste of everybody's time. Let's move on. <laughs> the MAC Corolla DeVille collection is atrocious, and I don't know, like it's been roasted already, I'm here to roast it too. We all know how I feel about MAC. I think MAC needs to just give up. Like, they're a dead brand and they need to accept it and they need to just move on, you know? Um, this is so bad. Everything about, oh my god, everything. Everything about this is just bad. The lips look okay. You know, Cruella de Vil, give me a red lip, that's fine. Oh, this palette is awful. Uh, the palette itself is ugly. It looks like it comes apart. Wait a minute. I don't think this is one palette. I think this is four palettes. <gasps> Wait a minute, no. It's one palette for $45, but it looks like it comes apart into four different palettes. This is so bad. Mac. Okay, I'll say one nice thing. The brushes being split, half black, half white hairs. It's cute. That's a cute move. Yeah, that makes sense. I like that because it's cute. It's on theme. That's like the only fucking thing that makes sense in this whole collection. That's very cute. The rest of it, pack it up, throw it away, give up. Okay, just give up. Oh, Good Molecules. You know what? I've never tried Good Molecules before, but they're at Ulta and they are a really good price point and I really want to try them. I mostly only use The Ordinary and I'm pretty loyal to The Ordinary, but I just want to try Good Molecules. They have this glycolic exfoliating toner. I use The Ordinary Glycolic Acid and I do like it, but I kind of want to try it. Good molecules. Maybe I'll find something from them that I don't use from The Ordinary. Like, I really do not like The Ordinary's cleanser. Uh, so if Good Molecules has one, I'll probably get that. I'm looking for a good moisturizer. I have not tried one from The Ordinary yet, but if Good Molecules has one, I'll try it. I do want to try something from that brand. I'm really interested in Good Molecules, and I really want to try something from them. These Melt lipsticks look cool. I like how Melt does, like... They do neutral lipsticks, but with a twist. Like, they do shades that it's kind of, like, harder to find. They definitely have, like, very unique undertones in their neutral lipstick line. And, I mean, these are no exceptions. These are really cool. I am not trying to find any new lipsticks right now, but if I were, I would go to Melt. I have one lipstick from them. It's kind of old, but I like it. I still use it from time to time. I like Melt. I, I think that they're a good brand, so these look kind of good. So there's another face and body foundation from Revolution Glow. Interesting. I guess this is like a summer thing. I like that they have like a powder and a fixing spray. They've got like other things going on 
with the release of their face and body foundation, but I don't know, I guess that's like cool for summertime, you know, for your shorts or whatever, so your legs can look tan or what like I don't know I don't really get it because if you have a if you have a body foundation on you can't really like sit like you can't sit in your car right like I don't get it can someone explain like who wants this these BH Cosmetics palettes look really cool this is kind of like what I want from Colourpop like an interesting color story like it does not have to be monochromatic like you can put some creativity into it I love these but I don't know, I've only had one BH Cosmetics eyeshadow palette and it was awful. I hated it. I know some people really like some of the BH formula, like I know that they can do a good formula, but it's not every palette. They only give the good formula to some palettes and it nobody really knows until you try it, so I don't know. How much are these? They're 15 bucks each, that's so not too bad actually. Um, the brushes look cute. Are these glosses? They look really pretty and sparkly. I don't know, like, I don't like the formula that I tried. Oh, they have a palette called Fuck Off. That's kind of cool. And I actually really like that palette too. It's kind of giving me, like, when MAC had their Basic Bitch palette, it's kind of giving me that energy. Like, they're trying to be edgy. Low-key love you. They're Yeah, they're trying to get, like, the zoomers, you know? I'll wait to hear what people think about it. And if it's a good formula, I might pick some of these up because... I like them. I think they're really pretty and I like the unique color stories, but I don't know, like they're also kind of cringy. Like now that I'm looking at like how they're designed, I'm kind of cringing out a little bit. So I don't know. We'll see. Oh, the ColourPop Barbie collection was really cute. I was slightly tempted by it, but I didn't end up getting it because I don't need it. I don't need anything in here, but it's very cute. The color story in the palette is like exactly what I've been hoping that ColourPop would fucking do, which is like, basically it looks like any other ColourPop palette, but with increased saturation, which is exactly what I've been waiting for. Like their Lemoncello palette was like, I bumped up the saturation for that palette and it was beautiful but then like in reality what they gave us was like a dusty mess and so this they did it right they actually gave us some bright shades in here and a variety of shimmers and a variety of shades so I did really like the palette it looks really pretty um aside from that I liked the lipstick bullet components it really gives me like Barbie like kid makeup vibes in a good way like I thought they really killed it with this collection and you know obviously I grew up as a little girl, I was obsessed with Barbie, so that nostalgia factor did it for me, but I just didn't feel like, you know, I needed to spend money on any of this stuff, but um, I did really like this collection, I thought they did a really good job on it. Okay, here's one that is so disappointing, it is so sad to me, this Prince collection that Urban Decay did, it, blasphemy, <laughs> Prince, Prince is an icon, Prince inspired fashion, culture, even makeup you could say. And this is what they did to him. They got the green light, they got the rights to do a Prince themed collection and this is what they gave us. The, how, how, how? There's one purple in this whole palette. Wait, are, there's two palettes, wait a minute. I don't really know what's going on here but this looks like something Morphe would do. You know, it's disrespectful and it's bad. It's uninspired. This palette is the worst thing I've ever seen. And they fucking had the audacity to put Prince's name on it. It's hurting my brain because it's hard for me to even accept the fact that this is real. They could have done so much. I'm gonna just throw on the screen just some like really cool photos that I find of Prince. I'm just like literally gonna Google Prince and throw some images up and pick like you could how many how many shades? This is a 10 pan palette with I guess like a separate four pan palette, 14 shades. Out of the photos that I'm putting up on the screen, you can pull 14 shades out of each of these photos and make a bomb palette. And it's like they picked out the most desaturated, dusty, dry ass looking, awful garbage shades 
possible. And I get it. So when I worked for MAC, there was like the Selena collection. It was like the same thing, just very uninspired, very boring, very bad. But the way that the like the that they at MAC told us to talk about it with people was to say that you know, we have these collections so that everyone can use it. So they kind of want it to be like a little bit more neutral so that the average person can do something with it. But you know, that's fine for like your, you know, anytime kind of collection that you're coming out with. But when you're doing a collection that is inspired by somebody, especially somebody as influential and just, you know, flamboyant, as Prince, like, it's kind of like disrespect, you know? Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just butthurt about it, but like, I feel like it could have just been so much better and it just wasn't, it just, it's bad. It's literally bad. I, oh, I don't know. I feel like I've been scrolling for a while and everything is just very boring to me. Yeah, there's nothing really standing out. There's nothing that's really making me feel like Excited. Okay, I'm gonna go to the indie mood because I'm like, I'm over trend mood. I'm kind of bored. Oh, what is this? Bitter Lace Beauty. What is this? Is this an eyeshadow? It doesn't say. I assume this is an eyeshadow. It just looks really cool. It looks like a blood splatter. I've never seen this before. It's very cool. I would assume it goes on kind of like a pink. Let me go to their page and see what, if they have a swatch of this. They don't. Oh, this brand looks really cool. I've heard of this brand before but I've never actually gone to their page. I'm gonna follow them, damn. It looks like they do a lot of like duochromes, multi-chromes. Oh, it's a highlighter. Well, can you swatch it? I wanna see what it looks like. This is a video and I'm just like waiting. I like can't find it swatched anywhere, but it looks really cool. I want it just to have that, you know what I'm saying? Like I just want that in my collection. It just looks very cool. I bet it's really pretty. I might get that, that's really cool. Um, ooh, Glisten has their, uh, this is like one of many new split liners they've come out with in this like little rectangle thing, this pride liner. I love Glisten. The eyeliner I'm wearing today is a Glisten, um, liner. It's this one here. This is actually very cool because if you want to get into like a water activated liner type of product, this one is just a rainbow. You've got all the shades of the rainbow and then the purple doesn't look in this, it doesn't look like very purple. You might want to get like a separate purple and the red looks kind of more on the orange side. You might want to get like a true red depending, I don't know, depending on how it like goes on. It's hard to see from this photo, but that plus a black plus a white, like that's all you really need. So this is very cool. I already have a pretty substantial collection of wet liner shades, so I don't need this, but this is very cool. If you are thinking about it, thinking about trying a wet liner, I would say go for it. Like this is very convenient, very compact. You get it all, go for it. I love Glisten liners, they're amazing. Oh, this Midas palette looks really good. This looks very good. Everything in here looks just like rich, pigmented. I love Midas. I did not like their formula at first. I thought it was trash. I thought I hated Midas. And then I, I like forced myself to use their uh, Flower Bomb palette more and now I like it. Like, I think you just kind of get have to get the hang of it. It's definitely more of like a buildable formula, but I, I like Midas now. So this palette looks really, really pretty. The shimmers look really, those might be pressed glitters though. I know they do a lot with pressed glitters, but I like pressed glitters, so I don't really mind, but I know a lot of people hate the pressed glitter thing, but it looks really good. So here's the rest of those uh, split liners. So Glisten collaborated with like a bunch of influencers and each influencer got to like pick out their five shades, I guess. I love, there's one that is literally the three primary colors, red, yellow, blue, and a black and a white. So whoever made that one, very smart very very smart because then you can literally make any shade that you want to but some of these look really cool like different unique shades of green and blue there was one that's like a retro yeah this one like down in the corner deep reds brown yellow some good pastels these look really good <laughs> they look so pretty i kind of want to grab one of the pastel ones but i need to decide what is this this pan looks pretty Tracy's Powder Room. I've never heard of this brand, but I like the way that the um, the pan is pressed. That's so really pretty and unique. Oh, so they do like duochromes, multi-chromes. I think that's like an indie brand thing. 
a lot of what I see on the Indie Mood is like a lot of duochromes and multichromes and it kind of just like all blends in together. Okay, I'm scrolling, scrolling. I'm seeing just a lot of fucking duochromes. Okay, what's it like the Indie Makeup Spotlight I think is another one that I like. Ooh, what the fuck is this? <gasps> Wait, what the fuck is this? CXC Beauty Refined Radiance Bronzers, okay? These are bronzers, but they go really light, which means some of these are really good for fair skin tones. And they go really dark too. This is how you fucking do bronzers, okay? How come there's only ever like two shades to choose from? Like great for the medium skin tone girls, they always have a bronzer, but for me, I don't use bronzer, because I can't, because it's all orange. And from working at MAC and working in, you know, other cosmetics lines in the cosmetics department, there's never any bronzers for the deep skin tones, ever. Never. I've had to use eyeshadow when I used to work there. So, the, oh my god, okay, I gotta follow this brand, because they are doing it right. That's how you do a fucking shade range. And some of these look cool toned enough that they might be able to be like a contour shade too. Oh my god, yeah, I gotta follow them. Never heard of this brand, but they, they're they doing it right with the shade range. <gasps> they have palettes too? There's not really anything else that we haven't already seen and talked about, so I think I'm gonna end it there. Well, that was fun. I think that that was like a much more positive experience than the previous times I've done this type of video. I used this opportunity to get like my shit talking out and I feel like I didn't really shit talk enough. So I need to find like something to shit talk um, eventually. I, yeah, I liked a lot of that. I skipped a lot too. I think that's why it was a little bit better because I like, if I didn't really like something or I didn't really have a lot of thoughts about something, I just skipped it. So I think that's what made it better too. But yeah, that was fun. Yeah, let me know your thoughts about any of the stuff I talked about, like something you're excited about too. Let me know what else you want to see from me. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I post twice a week, every week. All of my social media will be linked down below if you want to be friends. Let's be friends. And as always, I just want to say thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!